Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss this example. So here we have two functions f and g, which are defined from R to R with a usual distance. Given that both functions are continuous. With the help of f and g, we have one more function. One more function is defined h, which is defined from R2 to R2 and with a Euclidean distance. And we have to prove that h is also continuous function. So let us write the given thing. Okay, so the given thing is already mentioned here. So let me write what we have to prove. To prove that h is continuous on R2. See, when we say the function is continuous on entire plane R2, if it is continuous at each point of R2. So what will we do? We will take any arbitrary point of R2 and we will prove that h is continuous at that point. So let us take one arbitrary point. So let x0, y0 belongs to R2 be any arbitrary point. Okay, so I'm taking any arbitrary point and our target is to prove the function h is continuous at this point, right? Okay, so now to prove that h is continuous at x0, y0. Okay, so let me show in the diagram. So actually we have two planes here domain R2 and co-domain is also R2. So we have a function h from R2 to R2, get it? So we have one point here x0, y0. Actually we have to prove the function h is continuous on entire plane R2 but we have chosen one point x0, y0, any arbitrary point, get it? And we have to prove that h is continuous at this point. See, there are several definition of continuous function, get it? So using epsilon delta definition also we can prove the same thing, get it? So as well as we have one set, we have one definition. If you have any open set in codomain and its inverse image, f inverse g, is open in domain, then we say the function is continuous. Same definition we have for a closed set also. One more definition we have, that means if you have any sequence, x and y, getting so we have a sequence x and y, which converges to H or x naught y naught, then if, if you have its image sequence H of x and y, and it converges to H of x naught y naught, then also we can say that function H it's continuous at x0, y0. So the same thing we are going to do. I'm going to use this definition of continuous function to prove h is continuous at x0, y0. That means what will I do? I'm taking any sequence x and y which converges to x0, y0 and our target is to prove h of x and y converges to h of x0, y0. So let me write that thing here. So let, let x and y let me write here x and y and b a sequence in R two D where d is a Euclidean distance and that sequence x and y and converges to x naught y naught. So now by definition of this continuous function, it is enough to prove h of x and y and converges to h of x naught y naught. Let me mention then it is enough to prove that h of x and y converges to h of x naught y naught. So this thing we have to prove. Okay. Let me remove this part. So we will have some more space to write. See here we have a convergent sequence, right? And we are familiar with the definition of convergent sequence. In the definition, epsilon is involved. So let us take one epsilon first. Late epsilon greater than 0 be given, right? And see this information we have x and y converges to x0, y0. So let us use it. So we have the sequence x and y converges to x0, y0. So by definition of convergent sequence, we can write for given epsilon greater than 0. But see, epsilon already we have taken. So let me write for above epsilon, for above epsilon greater than zero, there exists and belongs to set of natural number such that, see, this is convergent sequence in R to D, Euclidean distance. So let me mention such that D of 
x sin y minus comma x naught y naught less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to capital N. So we are familiar with the definition of Euclidean distance. Let us use that definition here. So the definition says square root of first component minus first component square plus second component minus second component square less than epsilon, right? To remove square root, I will take square of both sides. So xn minus x naught square plus yn minus y naught square less than epsilon square. See, actually we are adding two non-zero, uh, sorry, non-negative numbers and their sum is less than epsilon square. That means definitely each of them is less than epsilon square. So therefore, xn minus x naught square less than epsilon square and y n minus y naught square less than epsilon square with this condition, right? See, let us take positive square root. So we will have mod here and epsilon is, uh, we know it's positive real number. So you will have epsilon and by taking square root here, mod y n minus y naught less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to capital N. But see, basically this is definition of convergent sequence. So we get xn converges to x0. Similarly, here also we get yn converges to y0. So let me mention, so therefore that sequence xn converges to x0 in R du. du means usual distance. Mod is there, that means this is definition of usual distance, getting? So xn converges to x0 and here we get yn converges to y0 in R du again with a usual distance, right? See, there is no more space to write, make a screenshot of it, then we will go further. So here we have got two convergent sequences, xn and y. Okay, so we have reached up to this step, but still we haven't used the given information, which is so much important for us. So that information is f and g, both are continuous functions. So let us mention that thing. So we have, we have the important information is f and g are continuous functions on R, getting? So these are continuous functions on R, that means F and G continuous at each and every point of R. So therefore, definitely we can say F is continuous at X naught and G is continuous at Y naught. See, they are continuous at every point. So simply we are selecting points here. If F is continuous at every point, so that's why we say it is continuous at X naught and G is also continuous everywhere. So therefore it is continuous at Y naught. So therefore, so therefore, f is continuous at x0 and g is continuous at y0. See, but what we have, but we have xn converges to x0 and yn converges to y0. Getting So then we can use the definition of continuous function. If xn con uh, converges to x0 and f is continuous at x0, then by definition of continuous function, we can write f of xn converges to f of x0 by definition of continuous function in RDU, getting since in codomain now, so which is also R with usual distance and y converges to y0, but g is continuous at y0, g is continuous at this point, then by definition of continuous function, we can write g of y n converges to g of y0 in R d u, getting? So again, we got two convergent sequences, f of x in y n, which converges to f of x0, and g of y n, which is converges to g of y0, okay? See, we want some more space to write, make a screenshot of it, then we will go further. So here we have got two convergent sequences, right? So definitely we can use the definition of convergent sequence for given epsilon greater than zero, there exists natural number, getting? But see, epsilon already we have assumed at the beginning of this proof. So let us continue with the same epsilon. So let me mention, so therefore for above epsilon greater than zero, there exists See, natural number exists for convergent sequence, but see here we have two convergent sequences. So let us consider two natural numbers. Obviously, we will get two natural numbers here such that, let me mention, such that 
let me write f of x n converges to f of x naught in r du du means usual distance mod so i should write here mod f of x n minus f of x naught less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to n1 so that n1 i have used here getting and for this second convergent sequence we will use n2 so will you tell me what i supposed to write j of y n converges to j of y n so by definition we can write and mod j of y n minus j of y not less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to n2 okay see epsilon in a definition epsilon is involved but see epsilon denotes very small positive real number instead of epsilon if you take epsilon by 2 doesn't matter since it it also represents the same thing it's very small positive real number getting so just for adjustment okay just for adjustment that means to complete this proof i'm going to do a small adjustment that is instead of epsilon i'm going to write epsilon by root 2 both sides okay so for first also i'm writing epsilon by root 2 and for second one also this is just for adjustment but see here we have a huge problem so that problem is statement one is true for n1 and second is true for n2 we have to use both statements simultaneously so what will i do i'm going to select maximum of n1 and n2 then for that maximum both statement will be true so let us take late uh, so sorry huh? late n0 is equal to what maximum of n1 and n2 then 1 and 2 then 1 and 2 will be true for this n0 okay okay so let us uh, recall our target our target is to prove h is continuous at x0 y0 this started with any convergent sequence x and y which converges to x naught y naught. So we have to prove h of x and y converges to h of x naught y naught. So let us try to do that. So consider for n greater than or equal to this n naught. See d of. See h uh, we have defined on R two d getting to R two d where d is a Euclidean distance. So I should write d of h of x n y n comma h of x naught y naught getting so we have to prove h of x n y n converges to h of x naught y naught that means we have to prove this is less than epsilon what we have to prove this is less than epsilon then by definition of convergent sequence we will get our target getting this thing we have to prove we haven't proved yet so let us try to do that this is equal to d of see in the statement they have mentioned the definition of h h of x y is equal to this one so will you tell me what i should write here uh, f operates on first component and g operates on second component here also i will do the same f operates on x n and g operates on y n. h of x naught y naught here what i should write f operates on first component g operates on second component that's it d d means what euclidean distance we are familiar with this definition let us use root uh, first component f of x n minus first component f of x naught square plus we have to do the same thing for second component g of y n minus g of y naught square but see we have already proved its mod is less than epsilon by root 2 let us use it so its mod is less than epsilon by root 2 and square is there plus here also g of y minus g of y not less than epsilon by root 2 but square is there so i should write in this way uh, from i should mention from 1 and 2 see here we have already chosen n greater than or equal to n naught so definitely we can use both statements simultaneously i did the same see some part is still remaining so let me remove this part then we will go further so therefore what can we write this is equal to root if you take square square root epsilon square 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 root cancel plus epsilon square by 2 by taking square so their sum will be epsilon square which is equal to epsilon so what we get finally therefore d of what we have d of what we started with h of 
x n y n right comma h of x naught y naught and see what we proved finally it is uh, less than epsilon and we we have can assume this condition n is greater than or equal to n naught but see this is definition of convergent sequence so therefore what can we write therefore h of this sequence h of x n y n so this is the sequence we have in r2 converges to h of x naught y naught in r2 d d means what usual distance here okay uh, see h of x n y n converges to h of x naught y naught so we started with x naught y naught we started with what x n y n converges to x naught y naught and finally we what we got h of x n y n converges to h of x naught y naught so therefore we can declare h is continuous at x naught y naught but see x naught y naught is any arbitrary point of r2 let me mention but x naught y naught belongs to r2 is any arbitrary point so it's any arbitrary point so therefore it is continuous therefore h is continuous at each point of r2 so simply we can mention h is continuous on r2 so in this way we proved that function h which is defined in this way is continuous on r2 proof is over make a screenshot of it then we will stop thank you see you